My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Um, It's with sadness that we announce the passing of uh, Mr. Bernard uh, Barrett. Uh, Mr. Barrett was a longtime member of St. Joan of Arc, but over the last few years uh, he became ill and was placed in a nursing home. Uh, A private graveside service was held uh, last Friday, um, and I officiated at that, um, so please pray for the Barrett family. Also, uh, Carl Obachowski died um, yesterday or sometime Friday night. we uh, pray for uh, his peaceful rest as well and uh, for uh, comfort for uh, Peggy and for the rest of the family. Uh, the Mass intention today is for Jerry and Harry and Brower, who are both still here. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What? Okay. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourself in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. 
you shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their fathers, wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with, with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. Thanks be to God. Oh, I'm sorry, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The degree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, Rejoicing the heart, the command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the word of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of the everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord.
Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his, in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. I realize that there's some confusion with regard to the selection of readings for today. Um, there's a set of readings that are the normal ones we would do in the normal A, B, C cycle, and we're in year B right now. But there are also special readings that we would use for uh, the right of Christian initiation of adults, our CIA. And that's the, that's the mistake that was made. But anyway, it's a confusing thing. And because within the Lenten season, we are preparing people to come into the church. We make special use of these Sundays to um, uh, highlight particular things. So um, well, I don't want to go into too much detail about what the gospel uh, is, is for, for that. Uh, but um, I did want to say that we, we don't have any uh, candidates that are, any, any catechumens that are seeking baptism for the, um, for the Easter Vigil. Uh, none that speak English, and so that's why we're doing just the normal readings. Now, we should have um, some candidates for uh, reception into the church, though, at Easter time. And so, and they, are, they speak Spanish, so we're going to do the Easter vigil in Spanish this year. Um, but uh, 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 otherwise, we would do something bilingual if we had people from both communities. Um, anyway, enough about that. Enough about that. Let's talk about the readings for today. Um, in the season of Lent, there is always this, this challenge that is given to us um, in the readings. Um, and in the, uh, in the Lenten season in particular, we find that, that challenge. We see it throughout the year, really. But there is a particular focus of that challenge. And today, of course, is seeking a change in us. The... Uh, Certainly, Jesus was looking for the Jews to change the what, what they did, what they believed. It was not particularly successful on that particular occasion. But uh, we are called to make that change. And in the season of Lent, what we make sacrifices. We do various things to help us to grow, to help us to change, to help us 
to make those changes that we need to make in our lives. So we select particular sacrifices. We give up things. Or we make pledges to give alms. Whatever. Whatever the, uh, the practice is that, that is given, it's to make a change in us, to build us up in our faith, to help us to be more like Christ. Okay. So the readings for today begin with the commandments. It's a list of what we need to do and not do. And it's, but it's just a starting point. It can be summed up and has been summed up as loving God and loving our neighbor. But for now, in this setting, it is given just as a list of do's and don'ts, a starting point. If we take them seriously and live by them, they can lead us to everlasting life, but they're just the starting point. There's just the beginning. It can't be the end there just in following these ten things that are listed. St. Paul asks us to go deeper, not to look for some sign so that we will believe in Jesus, not to look to conventional wisdom to save us, but to accept the, that the Christ as power and wisdom. Power and wisdom beyond the power and the wisdom that we see here, we see in our own world. And that power and wisdom come from Christ crucified. The crucifixion makes no sense in the view of conventional wisdom. It looks like complete failure. This, this leader is raised up and then he's killed. So what's the point? No, in conventional wisdom it doesn't make any sense. But if we accept it as Christ has defined it, the power to atone, to forgive, to reconcile, that's the real wisdom. The example given in the Gospel demonstrates just how hard it was to get the people to think about things in a new way, in a different way. With wisdom, this heavenly wisdom, this divine wisdom that comes from the lips of Jesus, who is divine. Destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Now conventional wisdom would say, that's ridiculous. It took 46 years to build the temple. It's impossible to put it together in three days. They don't understand his wisdom. They don't understand what he's trying to tell them and the power that he has. Jesus is saying, break from that conventional wisdom, from the way that you have been thinking before, because it's not going to lead to your salvation. What Jesus is saying is, what I will do is the thing that will bring you to salvation. So don't sacrifice animals uh, in the temple. And look at what happens before he makes that statement. Um, he drives away merchants and money changers from the temple. It's not to be a marketplace. Salvation is not transactional. Sacrifice this animal and your sins are forgiven. Or you'll get a bountiful harvest. Or you'll be blessed with riches and health. Now, under the system that the temple had been operating, we could understand why there were merchants and money changers there. There was this necessity to sacrifice animals. So people would come from great distances. They couldn't bring animals with them. They needed to purchase them there for sacrifice. Because they were coming from faraway places, they probably had different currency. They needed to have, have their money changed. But what happened is that this became an opportunity for exploitation and possibly even graft with regard to the temple officials, maybe giving particularly good places in front of the temple for people to do their business. So that's what Jesus speaks against, this is exploitation of these people, but also that what he is going to be doing is going to change everything, and there will no longer be this need. Jesus will do away with all of that in his sacrifice on the cross. The lamb sacrificed to take away the sins of the world. It's a new Passover, a new thing that he is doing. Not what they had been doing for centuries, sacrificing a lamb and, and marking the doorposts with the blood of the lamb and eat, consuming the lamb. 
the sacrifice is himself. And he is the one. Jesus is the one who is to be consumed. Consumed. So he said, leave behind your old idea of how salvation works. Embrace this new way, everlasting and once for all. Of course, this is the Eucharist that we share. We come, we take, and we eat the lamb that is sacrificed for us. We live in this new way, not according to conventional wisdom, not according to a list of do's or don'ts, And then we are invited to imitate the self-sacrificing love of Jesus. That brings the power and the wisdom of God from Jesus to us. It enables us to do great things. Not just to be prepared for salvation, not just to be made ready, for that, not just to have our sins forgiven, not just to clear our consciences, but to change us, to help us to leave sin behind, to move in ways that, that model, that imitate Jesus' love for us, to live in the way that Jesus lived. So, as we do at each Mass, uh, we will uh, celebrate that Passover meal that the Lord passed on to us, that he changed radically. We will offer bread and wine that become his body and blood. We will receive Jesus into us in this sacrament. And we'll take this time, we'll take this wonderful time that we're, we're given, this wonderful celebration, and make use of it to help us to make the changes that the Lord is asking us to make in this season to grow in holiness, to uh, grow in love of God and neighbor. And in this way, we will fulfill the commandments, we will move away from former ways that were not helpful, we will live in this power and wisdom of God. And in this way, when Easter comes, and when we make this the huge, the, the um, the elaborate, if you will, uh, celebration of this new Passover, we will be filled with joy because we will see how the Lord has worked in us. We will see how uh, accepting the challenge that he gives us brings us to such a better place. We will ask the Lord to, um, to help us in this endeavor through the reception of the Eucharist today. And may the Lord bless abundantly those sacrifices that we have uh, decided to make or will decide to make if you haven't already. Uh, May we always know this wisdom and power of God in our lives. And may we never simply rely on conventional wisdom or earthly wisdom. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken 
through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God reveals to us the paths of righteousness. With confident hearts, we bring to God our prayers. That those who lead the church exemplify Christian simplicity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments and corporations commit themselves to justice for the poor and fair treatment for the vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer war's destruction, especially in religious conflicts, enjoy prompt and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the elect, and, the elect catechumens and candidates learn to love God's laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly deepen their faith through service to the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And again, we pray for a peaceful rest for Bernie Barrett and for Carl. Obachowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Faithful God, you show us the path of true wisdom. Hear the prayers spoken and unspoken that we ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the uh, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. The 
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Throughout Lent, the Knights of Columbus will be collecting non-perishable food items in a box in the narthex. Uh, this is for loving food resources. Please bring your non-perishable food donations uh, when you come to Mass. For your convenience, baskets are available in the narthex for regular uh, offertory and the second collection, which is for the building fund this week. Uh, the little black books for Lent are still available. They're outside. Um, please uh, take one as you leave today. Um, the bulletins uh, for this week are, all, are available in the narthex. And at the end of Mass, again, I remind you to remain in your pews until uh, the hospitality ministers um, direct you to leave the sanctuary. Uh, please don't linger in the aisles, the narthex, or the portico in front of the church. In order to maintain safe distancing, we ask that you continue walking out to the church parking lot. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.